Korean War broke out in 1950, immediately the Philippine government, under the leadership of President Elpidio Quirino, offered to support. Although at that time, you know, we still are recovering from the damage of World War II. They said, we have to sacrifice to fulfill the commitment of our country to help a member nation in need. And he says, the price of freedom was something that we fought for with our blood, and we were going to do it again. Authorized under an act of Congress, Republic Act 573, which was passed in early September 1950. It provided the legal authority for a total of five different Philippine battalion combat teams or PEFTOC battalions to help defend the beleaguered South Koreans. The Philippines sent five battalion combat teams to Korea with a total strength of 7,420 officers and men. And it was only through the idea of President Trino that we volunteered. We were never forced. I was young and we were trained, so we were prepared. No second thoughts. And since we had all volunteered, we were a very happy bunch, in spite of the fact that we anticipated hardships and deathly threats on the Korean front line. At Tucson, still another nation joins the growing UN command as 1,200 men of a crack Philippine regimental combat team come ashore. Well, when you arrive at Korea, about uh, five-sixths of uh, South Korea was occupied by the North Koreans. Only one-sixth was uh, occupied by the Allied forces then. And we arrived there in Busan. I saw Korea badly beaten, ruins. Then the, the civilians were bringing their packs, moving. You could see movement all around, back and forth, back, because everybody didn't know where to go. Children crying, and most of the children were very skinny. All in tattered clothes, hungry, begging for food. We sympathize with them because we already suffered the same consequences during World War II when the Japanese started bombing our areas. We give them food. But I was saying, their parents will come rushing towards us also and begging for food. The whole people there, they're starving. Very sad plight. Very destructive and communism. That's why we were expecting, not like we were facing trouble. Then from there, we were transferred to Sorewon. Now, this is the first time we noticed the cold. That was the coldest time during 100 years. It was about 15 degrees below zero. It was on 11 November when we started the first patrol between Myodong up to Shinji. I was leading the group because I was with the tanks, but the farther, farther is there were three jeeps. Now we reinforced them. Then followed by two companies, the Abel and Baker companies. Then before we have to cross the hill, which was dividing the area between towns, we have to cross a bend. Now in that bend, further, there was 45 area by the North Koreans. For example, this is a hill. There are four lines of trenches. So when we were able to clear that area, they started firing at us. 
it was so surprising that talagang everybody cannot move because I'm a bit tang nung kusina lim sa tang mirong periscope. I tried to look. Nakita ko nobody was moving because talagang firing at that area. Pati yung tanki ko na pasubsub doon sa ano. Ang ginawa ko, pinataas ko. Pagtaas ko, nakita ko. Yung mga North Korean troops, they were already talking of maybe attacking. Um, as a soldier, the first thing is safety. And instead of defending yourself, you attack. That's your reaction. You have to kill, to live. So lumabas ako sa tanki. Pagdabas ko sa tanki, hindi tang, there's a turret, there's a machine gun. Singan sa ingay lang, madimoralize kayo. Ang lakas eh, tuk 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 tuk. Ang ginawa ko, inipisa ko nung ganyan, nagtakbuhan. Yung nagtubatak ko, tinitira ko, tinitira ko, tinitira ko. Hanggang ko tayo po yun na all of them will nail down. Kaya last time, yung mga tawa namin na gano'n na nag-attack. Ang dami nila, tumatira sa akin, wala nakatama. Maybe it was God sent fortune, ano. Ngayon after that, Nung nahupa niya na about mga 30 minutes, eh, there were about 42 dead at saka about uh, 100 wounded. Ngayon, bumumba yung Amerikano, kinakongratulit ako because of that. Then after that, we proceeded to Shinji. Immediately after the Battle of Myodong, winter had already set in. The problem was that their uniforms that were issued to them earlier on were not sufficient. Colonel Sir, and here's his leadership. Sabi na, until such time that you give us this necessary equipment to fight the enemy, we will not move. Well, he was relieved and Colonel Ojeda took over. It was a very sad thing. Ipakatapos niyan, come April na, pumunta kami sa farther north, Now, there was a report that they are going to attack the UN troops. Yun doon naman sa Yuldong. Just then, the Chinese and the Koreans were inaugurating the first phase of what they called Chinese Spring Offensive. Ang nangyari sa Yuldong, ang 10B city nandito, to the right of the Bay City were the Turks, and to the left of them were the Puerto Ricans. There were now uh, eminent signs that uh, they were being attacked by the communists in mass. What the Chinese did was they massed their forces in the center, penetration. Dito nung atake sa atin. And then less strong forces on the side. There were Chinese who were able to penetrate the ranks of the Turks. The Turks, iniwan yung pisto. Similarly, the Puerto Ricans on the left also did the same. They gave way. Kaya nakapasok sila, nakapasok sila dito sa amin, na-encircle kami. Here come now the 10th BCT holding on to their line. Using the bayonet, 10 to hand. Use of hand grenades and so on and so forth. Kulang lang siguro, duraan na lang. According to Voltaire, God is always on the side of the greater battalion. How can you face your only 700 when the Koreans and the Chinese had about 700,000? Luckily, we were able to hold on. According to the testimony of the defenders, piles of dead were there. Piles of dead. Doon yung namatay yung si Captain Yap at saka si Lieutenant Arciaga, yung dalawang yun ang hero. I was assigned as the reconnaissance platoon leader of the reconnaissance company of the 20th Battalion Combat Team PEFTOC, then under Colonel Salvador Absede. Being volunteers, we were rushed to the front lines in Korea. We took a railroad that 
took us to north of Seoul, the capital of South Korea, and passed beyond the 38th parallel, where the rear echelon of the 20th Battalion Combat Team, PEFTOK, was uh, stationed. And uh, after spending overnight there, we were uh, taken to our frontline positions, north of the 38th parallel, in the uh, vicinity of the city of Chorwon, which is already part of North Korea. During the third week of May, our battalion decided that it is now or never. And I was picked by the battalion commander to lead the assault. And this is how I, myself, got into the big battle for Hill Erie. And uh, I was assigned to do this with my platoon of about 40, 45 men. We started the approach to the enemy fortifications at about maybe 4 o'clock in the morning. And uh, in May, in North Korea, 4 in the morning is still very dark and very cold. When we got to no man's land, after a truck ride of about 30 minutes, we had to creep and crawl. For uh, most of that period within no man's land, we had to prod with our bayonets on whether there are mines planted with tripwires in the rice fields. It was very dangerous. two hours of creeping and crawling. We saw really more clearly the enemy fortifications, which were our targets. We informed headquarters that we're here already in the assault line, we called it, ready to jump off towards the hill, but give us first the preparatory fires that we had planned. These were from the fighter planes of the supporting American forces that dropped napalm bombs along the target area. In the meantime, we were advancing up the hill, but when the napalm bombs were falling too closely to us and endangered our troops, I called headquarters to cease fire on that and then bring in the artillery. Which was behind us, and with the forward observer, Lieutenant Cosme Acosta. He did a good job of bringing in our artillery to bear upon the target area. And we continued advancing upward. When we were too close to the uh, enemy positions, we called for ceasefire of the artillery but we asked for tank direct fire. From our supporting forces in the back. And so the tanks being able to fire directly at the target, almost in a straight line, started firing. The tanks were firing, we continued to advance to very near the top of the enemy uh, fortifications. And when it was time to do it, I said, lift the tank fires, we're going to attack. We identified the bunkers and the foxholes of the enemy one by one. And we attacked them with rifle fire, with bayonets, and in some cases with demolitions. The hand-to-hand -hand combat lasted for about 30 to 45 minutes until I determined that the enemy resistance had died down. And I started accounting for my men and I found out that they were all present, accounted for, except for one or two that were wounded. I was very proud of the fact that we accomplished our mission. Well, of course, uh, personally, I was very thankful to the good Lord for uh, saving the troops. And then the 19th uh, BCT came in. I appreciate with the turnover 
from uh, the 28 BCD, turn over to us. My dad was fascinated by flying, first of all. Uh, that was his hobby. And when he saw that many soldiers were being sent to the front, he came to my grandfather, then President Quirino, and said, Papa, I want to go to war. And my grandfather looked at him and says, well, if you go to war, then my son has to go with you. Dad used to say, when Lolo told me that I had to serve in the Korean War, of course I feared. I feared for my life. I didn't want my children to be fatherless. So that was my greatest fear. But the love for my father and my sense of duty to him as his son overtook any fears that I had. And so I said, yes, Papa, I will do it. That was the story of how both First Lieutenant Tomas Quirino and Luis Chito Gonzalez joined the war. It was just like Quirino to send his only son at that time and his only son-in-law to the war. Because when he said the Philippines goes to war, he'll send his own family first. Luis Rosales, your asawa de Mabisi Quirino, pilot davong pepto kyo de. Asawa na He was a spotter pilot. He would go on this small plane at very high altitude and look for the enemy and relay the information back to the base so that they could either fire artillery or have other planes uh, with armament go there because his plane had no armament at all. Dad was assigned to desk duties in the beginning. Signal she. He makes sure that all communication to the line to everyone has to be connected, that they properly connected can be contacted anytime because you don't go to combat without communication. Signal is very important. Because at this time, he was married to the first lady of the Philippines, my mother, no? So Siguro, they wanted to give him some type of preferential treatment, and he didn't like that at all. So he wrote to them, and he said for them to please give him combat missions. My mother even said to me that your father, quote unquote, would do anything to measure up in the eyes of his father in the sense of esteem and respect. So he kept telling their officer, I, I want to see action, I want to see action. 10th of June, we were shipped to Lyon, Jamestown. And that's about three miles long stretch of defense of the United Nations forces. And in five days, we were sent to the T-Bone Hills that is Hill 191 and Hill Iri towards the stem of the bowl where the one regiment of Chinese are there and we had a four days battle with the population. Oh, that was terrible, you know, terrible. You can just imagine artillery bomb dropping just in front of you a few yards away and then you're in the height of battle. If this is the hill that we occupied, the enemy was already crawling up, up, up and our firearms didn't see the bubutok, but I don't know. My company commander was requesting for firing position. I will say, we need to sell the local ramen. Bomba in your arm. But my battalion commander didn't approve it. Dito rin. Pili bagsak na ikin. end of the battle, after four days, there was a recording from the 45th Division that no less than 500 enemy Chinese soldiers were killed by our artillery alone. That's aside from those who we encountered, you know, hill, they suffered a lot. to leave, you know, to be relieved by the 14th BGD. And three days before, we sent a patrol between our line 
And anyway, the squad there told me, Sarge, iwan ako muna sa iyo yung pera ko ha. Baka mamaya kung ano mo yan sa akin doon. Eh, nakaptured siya. You know, that sergeant there is from Baranoa City. And I was personally responsible in bringing him there to that my unit. So, you know, I grieved so much about it. Well, that's their fortune. Alam mo, pati sa akin, is just a lucky. I never thought with people how many thousands there firing at me. Hindi ako tinaman. It's a question of luck eh. Tawagin natin silang marangal, matatag bayani, masigasig ng mga Pilipino. My mother was totally worried. She kept writing to my father, come home soon. I miss you, sweetheart. She would apologize. I am so sorry to keep bothering you, but I haven't heard from you all this time. And the stories of my mom, on the other hand, she showed me some of the love letters of dad to her. He was pretty romantic. He said he missed the family, he wanted to be home. It must have been quite challenging for him. I remember him saying it was the worst time of my life it was freezing. We were freezing. The biggest enemy that they had was the weather, actually, and homesick. Dad never left behind any memoirs, but he did send letters to my mom telling her that finally he got his wish and that he's pretty happy that he came home alive from the experience. I was initially assigned to the 7th Battalion Combat Team of Colonel Napoleon de Valeriano of the Nineta Unit. Then, uh, after about a year, I was given orders to join the 14th BCT. When we left the President Quirino Center shop, he was at the pier. And he told them, just before they left for Korea, and I will call, I sent ahead of you my only son and my son-in-law to offer their blood in the defense of democracy. Thus, my pride will be that with my own flesh and blood, I shall have participated in your coming struggle and victory for the honor and prestige of our country." Unquote. That is what he said. We relieved the 19th at Pike Saxon under the chestnut orchard. Then we were moved to Christmas Hill. That was our last battle. We replaced an American battalion who suffered a lot of casualties. So almost wiped out the one battalion of the 45th Division. To replace them, we had to climb up the hills. And then when we went up that hill, sometimes you vomited the, the smell of glass decaying. Nung dadaanan mo, mga patay, minsan eh, limang level yung patong. Well, eh, you get used to it. We captured the Christmas hill. Then the Chinese attempted uh, several times to recover the hill. They throw in battalions after battalions to try to inflict as much casualties. They throw in ev practically everything. Parang ubusin na yung bala. It's like New Year. When you fight back in that war, you have everything you need. Artillery, fire support, tank support, aircraft. You can ask for and fire support. down to the Christmas Hill up to the time the truce was implemented. Took effect 10 in the evening, ceasefire na yun. Well, silent and then everybody was out thinking about going home and then be thankful to all that you are alive and kicking, so it makes you feel good.
went to Korea, there was already a truce, but everything was still on a war footing. There was the main battle position, the demarcation line between the two Koreas, which both sides guarded. The North Koreans guarded the north side, we did the south side. On the lines, your duty there would be to look through binoculars and you monitor the movement of the enemy on the other side. When the uh, armed forces decided that there was no longer need for the BCT in Korea, the orders were for the BCT to come home. But on the last minute, they said a contingent of one officer and ten enlisted men must stay behind, and I was the one chosen. So because of that, while the rest of the battalion went home, I was there for another additional uh, one month and a half. Our contingent was myself, only one officer and ten enlisted men. And we spent the last day more or less turning on equipment, so we were in fatigues and uh, we were not really in very clean state. While we were waiting for our plane to Tokyo, all of a sudden, here was a major with all of the guy ropes asking, where's the officer of the departing Philippine contingent? I said, uh, I'm, I'm the officer. I said, can you get your men ready? Because there are three generals who are coming to see you off. And sure enough, to send off a second lieutenant and ten enlisted men. They came with stars and stripes coverage. And uh, that, I think, shows uh, more or less the spirit of democracy that prevailed in that UN organization, where notwithstanding your nationality, notwithstanding your rank, as a group you are considered a Philippine contingent and therefore entitled to the honors of uh, arrival or send-off. My spirit of patriotism was really enhanced. You know. What an experience to be fighting like that. It is something that I can be proud of, that my family can be proud of. Being part of Pef Talk was one of Daddy's favorite episodes of his life. When he was diagnosed with cancer, the last trip he took was to Korea. He wanted to go back to the 38th parallel to Pamunjong, just to go back and rekindle those memories. For me, that told me a lot about what he felt about being in the Korean War. Yung kabayanihan, kagitingan, at katapangan ng mga Pilipino na sumabak sa Korea ay dapat mabigyan ng alaala. It is a moment of remembrance, but it is also a moment of extreme pride that our fathers and my grandfather saw it fit to be part of the democratic principles of freedom, that we did what it took to keep our cherished democracy. And to all the soldiers that fought hand in hand, side by side, heroes of the PEF talk, I salute you all. May the youth, like we do now, and hopefully generations to come, may they never forget the freedoms that were purchased with your blood and your sacrifice. This is the nation of World War II and the Korean War. And the Vietnam War also after the Korean War to all of us. And some of us not only suffered from all of this, but some old warriors like uh, were there. But we were happy to do our little humble participation in all of that.